Hey everybody, welcome to Midday with Mark. How are y'all doing here on uh, Tuesday, May, what is it? May 12th? May 12th? Is it May? It's May. I think it's May. I've got really long hair today. I got the hat on, Steelers, salute the service hat, little support the troops kind of thing. Uh, so uh, welcome. Glad you're here. Glad you're part of Midday with Mark. Uh, excited that you're here. Day 39 coming at you from Pandemic, Pennsylvania, uh, Pandemic, Pittsburgh, uh, Corona, Coriopolis. That's where I'm broadcasting from today. Live to you. Glad you're here. Welcome. Uh, thanks for being here. Hello, Dean Ward. How are you, sir? Good to hear from you. Miss you, buddy. It's hard to believe I haven't seen you in months. Well, I was at your house for a brief second, but, um, Good to be here. Uh, I brought a friend today, as you can see. I made a recent purchase. Uh, you know I collect pops, but I also have a couple statues that I bought. And I went to the comic store this week. I'm not going to tell you where because he wasn't supposed to be open. But uh, I stopped by the comic store. Don't want the governor to go after him. Um, he posted uh, some hours that he was going to be open. So I ran by. Because I go there every week and I haven't bought stuff for him for two months. So I felt like I needed to support him a little bit because I haven't given him any of my money in two months. So I bought the statue and I uh, gave him a little tip too. But uh, support your local business. So there's my little Spider-Man statue. He's pretty cool. Um, my favorite. Spidey's always my favorite. Um, so yeah, welcome. Glad you're here. Uh, we are on day 39. And by the way, this is the last week of Midday with Mark. So... Friday will be the last day. We'll end on episode 42 of Midday with Mark. Go back and watch the old ones if you want. But I know the millions and millions of fans. I know the millions are. I know I'm disappointing you. It's like Seinfeld ending or Cheers or I know I'm dating myself now. But but uh, I know it's coming to an end. Uh, <laughs> graven image. Yeah, I know it's coming to an end. And um, and uh, Friday will be our last uh, midday with Mark. But it won't be our last. Uh, time with me. Uh, we're doing. We're gonna do a midweek with Mark on Wednesdays, and uh, we're also do a Friday update for our church as our church moves into doing a uh, drive-in service on Sunday, May twenty fourth. We're gonna start that eleven o'clock Sunday, May twenty fourth. We're also doing a food drive, so you can drop off uh, canned goods, non perishables, when you come to church, and we'll deliver that to our local food bank. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to the food banks. A lot of people need a food, especially because their unemployment has taken a long time to come or uh, whatever. Uh, there's all kinds of reasons, but we can help out as a church in a big way doing that. So um, that's coming up May 24th. Check your Facebook. Check check all of our outlets for that. We'd love to uh, have you be involved with that. We will still have an online presence. Don't worry about that. There still will be an online presence. We're still trying to figure out what that will be, either a recording of the outdoor service or kind of what we've been doing, maybe a little bit different version of that. So uh, with mixture of elements from live uh, outdoor service and pre-recorded. So not quite sure yet, but I'm so glad that you're here today. Uh, we're at the series called Simply Jesus Part. Uh, this is part three, I believe, part two. I don't know. It's uh, it's number 39. Tomorrow's 40, 40 days, 40 days of midday with Mark. Okay. So crazy, but, but uh, here we go. All right. Y'all ready? Buckle in. Here we go. Here's a question to start out today. Uh, how many of you like shark week? How many of you like shark week? Anyone like shark week? Um, uh, anyone, anyone like shark week? Is that a show that you're into shark week? Any of you afraid of sharks? Uh, you don't get in the ocean because you are afraid of sharks. Uh, I actually had, this is no lie, you can look it up. Uh, his, uh, his, he, my nephew, <coughs> my nephew was bitten by a shark last summer on the foot. He's okay. But he was on every national news outlet you can imagine. Uh, John Price is calling me. Sorry, John, you got to wait. Um so he was on every national news outlet. He was bit by a shark. And uh, he was on the Today Show. He actually was on Shark Week. They happened before Shark Week. And they had him come and talk about being bit by a shark. He was a teenager. He's a surfer. 
So uh, my nephew was, uh, had his 15 minutes of fame last summer because he got bit by a shark. Um, pretty crazy. So uh, the author, we've been looking at this book called The Myth of the Myth of the American Dream. I highly recommend it. Um, so she breaks down like kind of the values of America. And we've been, last week we talked about affluence. Then she has autonomy. We're not going to talk about that today. But then she has safety. Safety as one of the one of the values of the American dream that is kind of a myth. Um, and she, um, it's, it's very apropos right now, right? Because everybody wants to be safe. And I get that safety in and of itself is not a bad thing. Uh, she has a little quote here at the beginning. It says, no one leaves home unless <laughs> no one leaves home. Is that funny? She wrote this months ago. No one leaves home unless home is the mouth of a shark. You only run for the border when you see the whole city running as well. Little quote by a guy named Warson Shire. But I want to read you a little bit about what she writes about Shark Week. All right. And about safety. And today as we, we think about Jesus and safety and what Jesus calls us to, uh, probably won't be safety. But um, here's what she says. I'm afraid of sharks. I am also afraid of the water in general, never having been a strong swimmer. As a child, I have always dreaded the clammy feel of seaweed attaching itself to my feet in a lake. I have always imagined dead fish squelching in every step. I took in mud, every step I took in mud and muck. There's something about not being able to really see into the water that scares me the most. We fear what we cannot see. We fear what we cannot see, what we cannot control. Do you get that? We fear what we cannot see and we cannot control. Uh, that's the virus right now, right? We fear that. Um, losing my place. And sometimes we fixate on certain illogical fears in order to avoid facing a reality that has the capacity to do us and others much more harm. There's a saying to illustrate this truth that goes something like this. We fear sharks instead of mosquitoes. I love this. We fear sharks instead of mosquitoes. And yet, on an average year, sharks kill less than six people worldwide. More people die from the refrigerators falling on them. You don't fear your refrigerator. Well, actually, maybe you should right now. It's pretty dangerous right now. I know personally. It's hard to stay away from it, okay? Maybe you should fear your refrigerator more than a shark, all right? He says, uh, more people die from their refrigerators falling on them each year than their shark, than a shark. While mosquitoes kill, on average, over 200,000 people a year. But a dark looming shape in the gloom of water is much easier for our brains to fear than a tiny little bug carrying a virus that can prove fatal. People are calling me like crazy. Stop it. There is no mosquito week on Discovery Channel. I think this is because malaria is not a threat to most people in the continental United States. Due to the toxic chemicals we sprayed decades ago. It's not a threat that affects our children. It is a threat that kills other people's children. Poor children. Black and brown and Asian children. Children we don't care as much about as our own. And we are not made to feel bad about this. There's a reason an entire culture can choose to fixate their collective fears on vaccines or terrorist attacks or sharks. While all of these categories do contain some risks, the fear and paranoia are not relative to the actual odds of something bad happening. It's similar to the logic I hear when certain groups of people love to tell me how dangerous immigrant and refugees are to the United States. It's a convenient way to blame an outside group for the anxieties we carry within. Do you get that? It's, it's a convenient way to blame an outside group for the anxieties we carry within. I mean, fear is a big thing. Safety, fear, we fear what we don't know. And uh, Jesus kind of waded into this. So we get to our, 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 our time in the Bible today. Uh, Jesus wades into, I believe, this thing about uh, safety. And I hope you hear this today. I hope, I, I hope you hear this. Uh, and I'm going to read you a parable uh, that Jesus taught. Uh, it's probably, there's probably two parables that have shaped Western society, uh, and, and Christianity, uh, whatever it's shaped thought, uh, more than, I don't think these two parables, there would be anything that's shaped 
Western society more than that. And that would be the prodigal son, my favorite parable. That Some people call that the greatest story ever told. The prodigal son. But the second would be the Good Samaritan. And the story of the Good Samaritan has probably shaped Western thought, shaped shaped everything more than maybe any other story ever told. And so uh, Jesus tells the story in Luke chapter 10. And uh, I want you to think about what we just read about safety, about holding on to safety. And maybe if we were so afraid of sharks, but really what's real dangerous to us is some of the other things in this passage, not not the th- not the thing that seems like a threat at first, but it's the underlying stuff that does. So in Luke chapter 10, verse 25, it says this, on one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. So you, Luke paints this to us. It's a test. They are trying to trap him. It's a bad idea, by the way. Any, <laughs> anytime you try to test Jesus or trap him, I promise you it's going to go badly for you. It, it's going to go bad. All right. It's going to go bad for you because you're going to end up trapping yourself. Okay. So here's what it says. Teacher, he asks, what must I do to inherit eternal life? He goes for the home run question, right? It's what I hear people say now. What what do I need to do to get to heaven? What is it I got to do to get to heaven? Now, he wasn't necessarily talking about heaven here. Eternal life um, meant the life now also. So it doesn't mean he's just talking about, I want to go to heaven someday. But this is kind of how Americans talk about eternal life, but eternal life actually starts right now. If you didn't know this it starts now, you can have the full life, eternal life, living, living water life right now. And so he says, teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Hey, there's my daughter. Hello, Miss Janie. How are you? Do uh, you want to give me a hug while I'm doing this? Okay. There you go. You say hi to everybody. All right. Okay. So he says, uh, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Okay. What is written in the law? Jesus doesn't answer a question. He often does not answer questions. Uh, but he he asks a question uh, when he receives a question. He says, how do you read it in the law? What is written in the law? He replied, uh, how do you read it? What is written in the law? How do you re- How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus goes, you got it. That's the correct answer. You answered correctly. All right. Uh, You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this and you will live. You will live now and you will live forever. Do those two simple things. Love the Lord your God and love your neighbor as yourself. And here's probably the scariest verse in the entire Bible. Okay. Here, here is the scariest verse in the entire Bible. Hey, you ready? It should, it should make us each take pause, but he wanted to justify himself. He wanted to justify himself. He wanted an excuse And I think the excuse a lot of people use is, well, that might threaten my safety. To love my neighbor might threaten my safety. It might, it might threaten my safety. I'm afraid of what could happen. It's like being afraid of a shark attack. I'm afraid of what might happen if I actually do that. So I need to justify myself. So you, if safety is your highest value, then you'll never love your neighbor. In fact, you'll never love anything. I mean, C.S. Lewis said that brilliantly. He said, if you, if you uh, want your heart to be safe, then don't love anything. Not even an animal, he said. Don't love anything if you want safety. Because love is never safe. And so this guy wanted to justify himself. What, what keeps me safe? How can I do that? And still say, still stay safe. Okay. And he says, and who is my neighbor? So again, he's like, come on, Jesus. Like, I don't got to love all these people. Who is my neighbor? 
And then Jesus tells the most famous story, one of the most famous stories ever told. He says, in reply, Jesus said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And by the way, I've seen that actual road. It's unbelievable. It's unbelievable how scary that road is. And how easily it would be to be attacked on that road. There's a monastery that sits on that road now in uh, response to, to, uh, to, this, to this parable. There's an amazing monastery. If you go back on my Facebook, look when I was in Israel, you see this road down in a, a valley. So he says, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. So he, he gives us two people that see the man in the ditch who's been the result of a drive-by mugging. Okay, He's laying in the ditch, nearly dead. The priest, the religious person, and the Levite, the best of the best. These two are the best of the best of Israel. If you're a priest, you're a Levite. You're two of the best of the best. You're you're our you're our shining example. You're our honor school student. Uh, your mom has her thing on the back of her car that says, "My son is a Levite. My son is a priest. Whatever." You know, you are the best of the best. Now, these are good people. Let's let's not let's not demonize them. Jesus doesn't. Let's not demonize them. They're good people. Could it be that the people in the story walk by the man on the other side of the road just because they feel like, well, that guy will threaten my safety. That guy will, I don't know what's going on here. Uh, I want to be safe. That's my highest goal in life is safety. And if I get involved in this, it's not safe. Or I don't know what's going on. I, I fear it. I don't know what what's happening. It might be the shark attack, but there's such a low probability of that. But what's really the danger is my addiction to safety. And so I walk by that guy, I leave him on the side of the road, not because I'm a bad person, not because the, not because I I don't believe in God or wh whatever, I'm not a, it's that I, I've elevated safety above everything. Like we wouldn't be sitting here right now listening to this or reading this if the people, if Luke who wrote this would have had his highest value been safety. We wouldn't be reading this right now. And Jesus says, these two are the best of the best. They're good people. You don't get to be the best of the best without being a good person. Some of our best. Honor roll students. You know, successful people. But maybe they've elevated safety above something else, which is love. But a Samaritan, and we assume this guy in the story is a Jew because he's he's in a he's going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, probably from worship. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came to where the man was, and when he saw him, he took pity on him. Now this is a huge Jews and hated Samaritans. Samaritans hated Jews. This is well known. It was all kinds of things. There was a past history. There was racial things. There are all kinds of hatred between these two groups of people. And so Jesus makes the hero of the story, the Samaritan, which most people, when he was telling the story, and a Samaritan came along, they would feel like, okay, this guy's going to finish him off. This guy's going to finish what the other people started. He's going to kill this man and take anything that's left or just kill him. So when he makes the Samaritan the hero of the story, you should know that something radical's happening. He said he saw him, he took pity on him, he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. Now get this. He takes the man to an inn at his own risk. Because he takes him somewhere in his own homeland. Not Samaria, but in Israel. I mean, it's safe to assume that people would think like, well, did you do this to the guy? You're a Samaritan. Did you, did you do this to him? I mean, he went at his own personal risk. He threw safety to the wind, went to his own, with his own personal risk, he went and he took care of this man. 
He says, the next day he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, he said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for my extra expense you may have. This guy goes the extra mile. This guy goes beyond. He's, he's deep into love and compassion here, which is never safe and is always costly. And it costs this man something. Look, if you want to protect your safety or you never want to pay a cost, don't ever love your neighbor. Don't ever love anything. But I think safety is not a great value to live at the top of your values. Sure, safety is important, but it's not more important than love. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? Jesus says, and the trap has been turned around. And the expert of the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. He doesn't say the Samaritan. He can't even get the words out of his mouth. But he says the one who had mercy on him was a good neighbor. And Jesus told him, go and do likewise. So to wrap this up, do you want to be safe? Or do you want to love? Uh, I remember growing up in the 80s, there was that song called The Danger Zone. Remember that? Top Gun. There's a new Top Gun coming out. Top Gun, Highway to the Danger Zone. That's where love takes you. It takes you to the danger zone. Love will always take you to dangerous places. Emotionally, maybe physically, spiritually, if you take the risk to love. Um, but, but the danger zone is an amazing place where awesome things happen, where God moves mountains and Jesus meets us in the danger zone. I've often said this, and I'll close with this, is if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, which I have not been, if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, can you imagine like if you got to the parking lot and you, you sat, you got out of your car, but you were like, I'm not gonna go any closer than this. And so you, you stood by your car and you could see the Grand Canyon. Yes, you could see it, but you weren't, you weren't getting the best view. It's the people that go right up to the edge who get the best view, where there is some risk, where there is, where there is not as much safety as way back here. And there's so many people that never leave the safety to see the amazing view because I'm convinced that Jesus is out on the ledge. That Jesus is out on the ledge meeting people and reaching people and doing amazing things. And some people will never get the thrill of being there on that, on that ledge, on the edge, of walking into situations where they're not completely mm -hmm. safe, but God's going to show up. So that's my challenge to you. Don't be afraid of the sharks. Don't be afraid of the imaginary sharks. Don't be afraid of, 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 of not being safe when you step out with Jesus and you step into what God is doing. The Good Samaritan did that. He went beyond safety into something something greater, and that was love. That's my challenge to all of us as we go through this pandemic. What's God calling you to? What's he? Where is he calling you to love? Where is he calling you to set aside some of your safety to pursue love, to pursue loving your neighbor and loving God? That's my challenge to you. It's been good to be with you. Tomorrow, episode 40 of Midday with Mark, number 40, and we'll be... Uh, We'll be uh, halfway through being done for the week and done done for this uh, Midday with Mark stuff. So uh, I will talk to you soon. See you tomorrow around noon. I uh, hope you're well. Stay safe. <laughs> stay safe. Not too safe. Stay well and stay loving and stay looking for ways to take some risks for God. All right. God's blessings on you. Love you guys. I'll see you tomorrow.